to kick off, you have a one minute opening statement. So I've been very involved with the Democratic Party as well, and the Democrat. But the reason why I'm doing this is not because of my service background, which I have been working at the federal, state, and local levels of government for, um, for over a decade. The main reason why I'm doing this is I have a five-month-old who never got to meet her grandmother. She died uh, from metastatic breast cancer because she didn't have access to care. And that's because uh, Republicans in Austin made a decision, uh, as many people in this room are concerned about, to limit access to care by not expanding Medicaid. So one of my chief priorities is to ensure that one million other Texans, just like her grandmother, um, do get the access to care they need when they need it. Um, so that's the, the main reason why I'm running. Well, that is a very honorable reason to be running. So with our first question here, uh, and I think you've kind of touched on that with your uh, introduction, in what ways have you shown support for and been involved in the fight for expanded reproductive health care access in Texas, second part, how have these issues impacted you personally and what experiences have shaped your perspective? And so um, I think that I probably cover um, the main reason why I think this is so important. I do want to highlight the fact that um, when you vote for someone, you're actually trusting your life with someone. You're putting your life in someone else's hands. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily realize that when they cast their ballot, that um, there's a heavy weight upon that. And that, that weight is not lost upon me by any stretch of the imagination. Um, with that being said, um, when I work for the U.S. House of Representatives, I work for Congressman Mark Vesey, who is um, very supportive of organizations like Planned Parenthood. And I would not have just made the decision to serve in that role uh, for a member who was not supportive of women and women's health, and not just women, but you know, organizations like Planned Parenthood uh, provide care to, to all people, not just women. So uh, it is something that I've been on the forefront of, uh, working to help shift the state legislation and policy at the federal level to ensure uh, that everyone has the access to the care they need that when they need it. Thank you. The next question is related to the 2019 legislative session that just passed. During the most recent session, extremist lawmakers pushed through a bill called SB 22. It was a dangerous anti-planned parenthood bill that banned local governments, including cities, counties, and health departments, from partnering with Planned Parenthood and other abortion providers. Local governments are playing an increasingly vocal role in the fight for reproductive rights, as we've seen by some of the proposed bans in smaller towns where they've tried to ban abortion within their city limits. If you were elected, would you offer a bill to repeal SB 22? And how would you be involved in the legislative race around local reproductive rights? Absolutely, I would fight to repeal SB 22. Um, more broadly, I do support local control in our state. Um, it is ironic, uh, given Texas's history, that now there is certainly a not a will to support local control by the Austin awesome Republicans, um, and we shouldn't lose sight of that. Um, it's going to take all of us to make sure that we get the change that we want to see. But that starts uh, not just with participating in the political process, but also making sure that um, we pick up friends and colleagues in Austin. Um, currently, District 100 is considered a state democratic seat. I'm the only person in this race that has successful experience in picking up seats throughout the state. The last election, I was the our work statewide outreach director, and then that role, we helped pick up 12 seats across our state. We only need nine more, and this is a presidential cycle, so we are definitely poised to win. Seats like 108, which I know you're having a forum for later today, and, uh, and nine and the eight others across our state, uh, we are really in a position to win, and it's going to take all of us to do that. I commit to you, regardless of the outcome of this election, but I feel confident if I just keep doing the work, and we keep doing the work, we'll be successful. But my pledge to you is I will work tirelessly in my district to make sure that my, district, my constituents have access to care and access to the services that they pay for with their tax dollars, um, but also that we have a taxes that benefits them as well, and that means picking up friends and colleagues who will vote with us in Austin so that we can get the type of legislation we want to see 
It's not enough to beat the drum. It's not enough to complain. It's time to act. It's time to do something about it. I'm the only person to raise that's actually successfully done that, and I'll do that if I'm elected state representative. Great answer. And now we'll take a question from our partner. A question from Moms Demand Action. Okay. So, the reproductive justice framework includes other issues affecting people's reproductive lives, such as domestic violence and safe homes. While we know that gun violence is a multifaceted issue, we also know that strengthening background check laws leads to less gun violence. So, how would you work to defeat opposition to increasing background check legislation? So I definitely uh, support uh, common sense uh, gun regulation. Um, you know, I have a law degree. Um, obviously, I know that I, uh, you know, sworn in, of course, uh, and I do support uh, our Constitution, and I am vow to uh, fulfill the obligations bestowed upon it. Um, however, we do need some common sense uh, approach to it. At the time that it was drafted, um, I believe that the intent was self-defense and being able to feed your family. And no one is hunting with an AR-15. Nobody is defending themselves with an AR-15. So I think it's really important that we have common sense regulation, such as uh, universal background checks, such as red flag, red flag laws. Um, and we also need to consider an assault weapons ban in our state, as well as munitions regulations that prevent guns from who are not automatic from becoming automatic. automatic. Um, so to give you an idea, that, that's where I stand on the issue of, of gun regulation. Great, thank you. For those of us, those of you that are joining us online, this is our candidate forum today. We're in Dallas and we're talking to candidates running in the special election for HD 100. The first candidate we're talking to is Lorraine Birabel. And Lorraine, if you could tell us a little bit more about um, what is your position on sexual health education in schools? Um, you know, I'm a parent, and we have a big conversation going on in Austin right now about what's the appropriate level of ed education, what partners should be involved, if, if it should be opt-in or opt-out. Do you have any experience working on sexual health education, or what is your, your policy positions around sexual health education in schools? Uh, I think it should definitely be science-based, evidence-driven. Uh, I happen to have three degrees. One of them is a, a, a major in biology and a minor in chemistry. So I'm not going to claim to be the absolute expert in any sort of STEM field, but I do have a background in it, um, and I think it's important that our education is science and evidence-based, um, because we know that that's what works. I think that every person should have the ability to uh, decide when is the right time for them to build a family, um, so that they can appropriately shape their future based on that plan. Um, and the, as far as what I've researched and what I've seen, Abstinence-only education does not do that. It has shown statistically to be ineffective, and I don't think that our state should be investing in programs that are ineffective. Thank you. That's true. In Texas, many school districts do not have any sexual health education, and many school districts still do abstinence-only education. Texas continues to be one of the highest ranking in teen pregnancy and the highest in repeat teen pregnancy. So clearly what we're doing now is not working, and we're looking for new changes that can help us push forward on better models for what we should be doing in our schools and supporting sexual health education. Um, we have just enough time for a closing statement. Any closing remarks before um, we're done? We'll wrap it up. Uh, one thing I want to make sure everyone knows is that I'm a fighter. I'm not afraid to stand up um, to the business elite. I'm not afraid to stand up to the Austin Republicans. I'm not afraid to stand up against the NRA. And so in me, you have a fire. You know that I'm a fire because of what I've already done. I don't have to tell you what I will do because you'll know what I have done. Um, I was one of the people who sued our current governor to prevent voter ID from being implemented in Texas. Redistricting is gonna be a critical component and that's why this election is so important, this election cycle we're upon now, because the legislators feel like now will help determine the maps. Um, if we have a Texas where people are disenfranchised and are not allowed to participate in the process, we have a state that will draw maps that do not benefit people like us. That's just the facts. And so I really hope that my experience in being on that lawsuit, I not only put my name on it, I help find the witnesses, I help conduct the depositions. It was not an easy thing. After Shelby Beholder, 
uh, really curtailed some of the things that we were able to do in court. So instead of us uh, being able to explain how discrimination could occur based on the law, we then had to prove that discrimination occurred in fact. Um, and that's what I actually did. I helped prove that the discrimination, the discrimination was in fact. Um, and so, you know, again, I've gone against the Republicans and won. Whether it was at the ballot box, whether or not it was at the ballot box, or whether it was at the courthouse. You have in me someone you can trust, someone who's a fighter, and someone who will prioritize our community. So with that, if you want to join me in this fight, please log on to my website, LorraineForTexas.com, that's F-O-R. Uh, you can sign up to volunteer. Early vote starts Monday, so we need all the help we can get. Thank you so much. And thank you.